Here we go. Fabrizio Romano on United People's TV. It's been a long time coming, but here it is. Make sure you drop a like on the video and a big thank you to Fabrizio for your time today. How are you doing? Hello, guys. Thank you again. Really a big pleasure to be with you. Thanks for the invitation. I'm okay, and we are ready for the last week of transfer market, so here we go. <laughs> well, it's it's going to be a busy one for United because, you know, we have signed Donny van der Beek, but everybody wants to know what's going on with Jadon Sancho. Everybody wants to know what's going on with Sergio Regulon. And who best to ask than Fabrizio Romano, the man who really has been leading when it comes to transfers. So in terms of Jadon Sancho, Fabrizio, has anything really developed in the last 48, 72 hours that's changed the situation? Because nothing really has gone on in the last, after a, a couple of weeks of it all being very fast and very aggressive, it went very quiet for a long time. So what is the latest situation now with Sancho and United? I think it's normal that it changed like one month ago because the, the deal was close to be completed. In the, in the last days of July, they were close to an agreement. Then the official bid from Manchester United has not arrived at Borussia Dortmund. The unofficial bid was not try to sign the player. Borussia Dortmund always said they want 120 million euros. And the situation is still the same. So I think it's normal that day by day, we are in middle September, it's normal, it's just some weeks left before the transfer window will close. And it's normal that day by day, Manchester United have to consider that it's going to be difficult to sign Jadon Sancho because Borussia Dortmund always say they want 120 million euro. They are convinced they can keep the player. So it's just up to Manchester United if they will decide to make a new bid, to try with a new bid to sign Jadon Sancho. At the moment, there is no official bid yet. There's this, the, there is the agreement with the player. I always say that they have the agreement with the player about personal terms, about the contract. So always um, I have to remember that the player is not a problem in this deal. He wants to join Manchester United. Also, his agents want Jadon to, to join Manchester United if they can sign and they can find the agreement with, with Borussia Dortmund. So it's really up to Manchester United to see if they will try again, if they will go with the new bid. But at the same time, I'm convinced that Borussia Dortmund will not change their position. I know how German clubs work and you know too, and it's so difficult to change their head, their mind. So I think it will be difficult to go with the don'ts, with the installments, with different way of paying because they want 120 million euro and day by day, if you don't pay, it's going to be even complicated also because it's true, we are in the Corona summer, so many clubs were expecting to have a lower fee also for top players, but it's not like this for Sancho and for many others. So we need to see what Manchester United will decide, but in this moment, nothing has changed. And I think something that's important for United fans is, as far as we know, Jaden Sancho wants to join Manchester United. Is that the case? Do you feel or do you know that he really does want to move to United? And, and has he actually done anything to sort of push for this move? Because we all thought that maybe at some point he could do a transfer request, he could go on strike like other players have at Dortmund. But has he done anything to try and force the issue from his side or is he just waiting for United to try and agree the fee with Dortmund? No, till now he never considered to make a transfer request. He would. He doesn't want to strike with Borussia Dortmund. Also, because we have always mentioned that, for example, I see many fans telling me, "How oh, you saw Albert is going to Chelsea? So why Sancho can do the same thing, pushing to join the club?" You have to remember that Borussia Dortmund is also an important club. They are playing the Champions League. They are going to fight to to win the Bundesliga. So it's a different situation from Bayer Leverkusen with Albert. So that's why Jadon Sancho is so respectful with this club. He said, OK, if you're going to sell me to Manchester United, I would never be a problem. I would join Manchester United. I would be happy to join Manchester United. And really, he's bought in to join Manchester United because his desire is to come back to the Premier League to play with Manchester United. So it's normal. But at the same time, he's so respectful. He's not going to strike with Borussia Dortmund. He's just waiting to understand what will happen if Manchester United will arrive on next day and going with an important bid, 120 million euro. For sure, Jadon Sancho, the day after, will fly to Manchester. will not be a problem. But... At the moment, there is no bid for 120 million euro. So Jadon is happy at Borussia Dortmund. He is going to continue his, his chapter at Borussia Dortmund. And you know, has happened for Bruno Fernandes, who was waiting for Manchester United for many months, and then he joined. It's possible that the same would happen with Sancho. We will see what will happen, but. For sure, in this moment, the player is just waiting. He's so respectful. I see that it's the same situation we had here in Italy with another top player, young top player, Lautaro Martinez with Barcelona. Inter and Barcelona were negotiating during March, during April, and the player never had to strike. He said the thing that Sancho is saying to Manchester United now, if you sign me, I am coming. 
I will be happy to come. But if you don't, I stay here and I play with my club. So that's, I think, a good way to be respectful because he's a good guy. So I'm convinced that Sancho is not going to strike with Borussia Dortmund. And you said there about uh, his agents actively want him to join United as well. Is that because they're going to benefit out of the deal? Is that a sort of pressure that's on Sancho? And from your perspective, is there anything that is indicating that United are actually going to pay that 120 million? Have you heard anything in terms of Woodward and Judge and the negotiations? Or are United no, just going to miss out on him? I think they, they want to pay 120 million euros this summer with a, a, a cash bid because it's impossible this summer. But, but it's not about Manchester United, apart from Chelsea. Any other top club can't sign this kind of players. It's the same for Barcelona, you see, with Lautaro, for Real Madrid, with many other top players. Here in Italy, also Juventus is the top club here in Italy. is having, having problems with, with the top deals. So it's normal for top clubs in this summer to have problems to sign this kind of players. I say the part of Chelsea because they had many problems for last year on transfer market. So it's normal this summer for them to go for many players. So I think in this moment, it's really difficult to imagine Manchester United to offer 120 million euro cash to sign Jadon Sancho. The only chance is for, for Manchester United to sign Sancho, in my opinion, is not paying 120 million euro cash because it's impossible in this summer for any, any top club. But is using the right way with add-ons, with installments, if Borussia Dortmund will change their mind. So if you find the right way, when we speak about add-ons, we can mean many things. We have difficult add-ons, like I win the Champions League, I win the Premier League, and I'm going to pay you. But we also have easy add-ons, for example, for the, the caps of the player, the goals scored by the player. So you have many ways. I think Manchester United can, will try for sure to find the right way, but will not be easy because Borussia Dortmund don't want to hear the word, the, the word add-ons. They don't want to hear this. They want just money. So it's normal by a top club like Borussia Dortmund because they in the Bundesliga are a top club. They are playing the Champions League. They are any good players. So I think in this moment, it will be really difficult to convince Borussia Dortmund with add-ons, with the installments and not paying 120 million euro cash this summer. If that is the case, United still need a right winger. And if that's not going to be Jadon Sancho, what other right wingers do you know that United have been in contact with as potential alternatives if we can't find this agreement with Dortmund for Sancho? Yes, you have to consider that Sancho has always been the main target. So they had small contacts until some weeks ago, some months ago, also with other players. But also these players and this agent know that Sancho was the main target. So was nothing advanced until this moment. Then if Manchester United will not sign Sancho, we will see what they will do. For sure, they will go with another player of these skills because they need this kind of player, this kind of winger. They had contacts with Ousmane Dembélé from Barcelona with his agent, but um, he doesn't want to, to leave Barcelona. That's what I'm told. He wants to stay. He feels this is his moment in Barcelona. So in this moment, there is uh, nothing advanced for, for Dembélé. And also Liverpool made a contact with him in June and he said the same thing. So it's not just about Manchester United. He just wants to stay at Barcelona. So we will see what will happen with, with Dembélé, but he was on Manchester United list. Douglas Costa from Juventus has been offered. Uh, he could be an opportunity because Juventus uh, wants to change this summer and they want Douglas Costa out from the team. But he's not the first choice, absolutely, from, from Manchester United. He had many injuries. He's a good player, but he had many injuries in last year. So that's why Manchester United are considering also other players apart of Dembélé and Douglas Costa. We will see. In this moment, they always consider Sancho as the main target. But I have to repeat, it's not, absolutely not easy. Well... If, if United do end up not signing Sancho this summer, it will just be another example, unfortunately, of the club and the long, drawn-out negotiations. From your perspective, you know, does it surprise you to see United doing what they're doing? With, with, it's, it always seems to be United that take this long to sign players. Is that not something that you feel is unique to United? Is this a United fans that are complaining where, I suppose, other clubs aren't? What's your take on United in the negotiations, in the transfer market? Well, you have to be honest, I think in this summer it's normal you get time to, to sign top players. We have to also, to, to be fair, to say that Manchester United signed Don Ivan de Beek in, in really small time, like in three, four days. They were really fast and, in my opinion, they signed a top player because I love looking at Don Ivan de Beek playing football. He's a perfect player for a top club like Manchester United, so they have been so good with Don Ivan de Beek. He's a particular transfer market because you have to take the opportunities immediately, as Manchester United did with Van de Beek. And you also have to be patient if you want to go to a player of the, the value of Jadon Sancho, because it's normal after the virus, the top clubs have lost a lot of money because you are losing money from the stadium, from the fans, 
from the merchandising, from selling players, because selling players this summer is complicated also for the top clubs. We have the same problem here in Italy and also in La Liga, top clubs, for example, look at Barcelona. They, they can't sell any player. They are going to, to, to sell players for free, like Rakitic, Vidal, Luis Suarez, top players, and they don't get uh, 1 million euro, 2 million euro for this kind of player. So it's complicated to sell players and it's obviously complicated to, to sign new players because on this summer, all top clubs, apart from Chelsea, they need to sign new players if they can sell some players. So, so Manchester United are also working on this side. And I, I won't say they are working bad. They are working in the right way, in my opinion. Obviously, if you have a top target like Sancho, you know you have to be patient. You have to try. It's the same that Manchester United did with Bruno Fernandes. There is the risk you can sign the player not in this window. You have to wait some months. But when you go for a top player, you know that this is the way. So I won't say that Manchester United are doing a bad transfer market. In my opinion, they are good well. They signed a top player like Tony van de Beek. And when you sign a player in three or four days, you feel like it was easy and he's not a top player. I don't know how to say, but if you need two months to sign a player, you will get more excited if you sign him. But really, Tony van de Beek is a top deal. Manchester United have signed top midfielder and Real Madrid were, were going for him like some months ago before they decided to not sign any player on the summer. And we are speaking about Real Madrid. Also, Barcelona were interested with Kuman. So we are speaking about the top top player. I'm convinced if Manchester United would need like two months to sign him, fans would have getting decided after two months in a different way. So just we need just to wait and to see who they are going to sign because Manchester United will not stop here. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, I hope not. I mean, Donny van der Beek is a great player, but someone we certainly are being linked with, and you've given a big update on him today, and that's Sergio Reguilon from Real Madrid. Now, United do need strengthening at left back, and this transfer, it's all, it seems to be based around the valuation and the buyback clause. Can you explain what the latest situation is on Reguilon to United, and, and when that bid is expected to go in, and how much you think it will be? Oh, well, I'm told that Manchester United is, are monitoring by day the situation of Sergio Reguilón. The player would love to join also because he understood that Sevilla are not going more, more for him. He had also decided to stay in Spain, but then he understood that Sevilla are going for Marcos Acuña from Sporting. So in this moment, there is no agreement uh, between, we have to say, between Manchester United and Real Madrid for Reguilón. But the two clubs are speaking. Also, the agents of the player are speaking with Manchester United. They offered Sergio Guillaume some days ago, as I told them, win to, to, to Manchester United. And the situation is that Real Madrid wants a buyback clause for, for Reguillon. They want 30 million euro. And in this moment, what Manchester United said is they won't pay 30 million euro for Reguillon. I think the opening big bid will be lower, like around 20 million euro. But we have to see what they will do on next days. At the moment, there is no official bid, but they are preparing a first approach with Real Madrid for Reguillon. They are speaking with the agents. Personal terms are not agreed yet, but won't be an issue because the player wants to play in the Premier League. He would love to join Manchester United, so Reguillon would not be a problem for, for Manchester United as contract part and also his agents. So I think we need to wait a bit to understand the first bid from Manchester United. But in my opinion, he is a good player, a good left back. So that's why Manchester United are going on him. We have to understand also about the clause because what I'm told is that Manchester United are not going to accept any boy back clause for this player. So it will not be so easy to negotiate with Real Madrid when they're going to sell young players, good players, Spanish players, as in the case of Reguilón, because they are worried they can lose a good talent in this case. But we will see if Manchester United will get him for 20 or 25 million euro. In this moment, there is no official bid, but they are preparing an approach because they are considering seriously the Guillaume as an option. Uh, and from what you understand, how, how firm will Real Madrid be to have that buyback clause in? Who's more likely to budge? Is it United on getting that buyback clause out of the contract, which would see maybe Real Madrid have the ability to buy Reguilon back in one or two yeah. years' time for a fixed fee? Who's more likely to budge, Madrid on taking it out or United on it not being in there? Who's going to win that one? <laughs> I don't know, but I think in this summer we have this kind of, of problem with many clubs. It's not about the buyback, buyback close, but it's the problem about the deals in general, that the top clubs are waiting for the last weeks because they know the clubs need to sell players, like as for Real Madrid, for Aguillon, because they have Marcelo, they have Mendy, so everyone knows that Real Madrid must sell Reguillon. 
and it's normal that Manchester United wants to sign him at their condition. It's the same for Thiago Cantara with Liverpool. It's the same for many players in, who, are, who are involved in transfer market at this moment. Uh, the clubs are convinced they are going to arrive on last weeks and they can get players for their conditions because the clubs need to sell these kind of players. So I think Manchester United won't accept the buyback clause. And Real Madrid, who always ask the, the buyback clause when they sell these kind of players, Need to need to change their mind if they want to sell Reguilón to Manchester United. If they don't, they can send they can sell him on loan to a Spanish side club or another club. But in this moment, Manchester United are the first choice for the player. Also because Sevilla are out, so we have to see what will happen because the player wants to join Manchester United. So you have always to consider at the moment there is no bid from Tottenham. But if Manchester United will not find an agreement with Real Madrid, we have to say what will happen. Also, if Mourinho said they have Ben Davis, they have Sesenyon, so at the moment it's not a priority for Tottenham. And the real club who are working to get Sergio on are Manchester United. And from what you understand, Regulon wanting to join Manchester United, that's what United fans want to hear. But is his ultimate ambition to be Real Madrid's left-back to replace Marcelo? Would he just be using United in that sense as a club where he can go and improve for a couple of years? Does he want that move back to Madrid just as much as Madrid want the option to buy him back? I think it's normal. We have to be honest. And to play, if you are Spanish, to play Real Madrid, the left-back is the dream for everyone. So I, I think he's not using Manchester United, but it's just... He's considering to move in a top world club because Manchester United is a top world club and to play with Manchester United is at the same level of play Real Madrid. So that's the mentality of the player. If I go to, to Manchester United, also without the day back close, I want to, to, to win. I want to win the Premier League. I want to win the Champions League. So the mentality of the player will be this one. If they will accept the buy back close, but I think no. I am told Manchester United will not accept any buy back close. Obviously, if they will accept it, he will consider it. he can become the new left back of Real Madrid in one or two years. But I think it's impossible that Manchester United will accept to sign a player and after one year they're going to, to sell him back to, to, to Real Madrid. So in this moment, if Manchester United will sign Sergio Guillon, it will be to, to be the new left back for many years and not just for one or two years. And then you come back to Real Madrid and the player knows it because you are joining Manchester United. It's not a small club. So the, the mentality of the player will say, OK, I come. To, to win here and to be the Manchester United left back. Thank you, Real Madrid, possibly in the future, because he's so young, so he has like 10 or 15 years to, to join Real Madrid in the future. But in this moment, if he's going to join Real Madrid, Manchester United from Real Madrid, he would be totally concentrated and focused on, on Manchester United. I mean, that, that is what United fans want to hear, because nobody wants <laughs> to sell your best players not to Real Madrid, and obviously we did with David De Gea, but we have done in the past. But... Speaking of selling players there, are there any updates for United fans on anything like uh, Andreas Pereira, Marcus Rojo, Phil Jones, Chris Smalling? There's still a lot of players at the club that a lot of fans feel are not good enough moving forward and that we want to shift this summer, but we haven't yet. Is, are the club doing anything behind the scenes and are there any bids that are coming in that we could see some of these players leave in the next few weeks? I think yes, in particular the two chance back because... For sure, Manchester United need to sell Rojo and Smalling. They are concentrating on these two players. They are offering uh, his agents, uh, are, is offering Rojo to many clubs, also here in Italy, also to Spanish clubs, also to Argentina clubs. They need to sell him. But at the moment, there is not a favorite because also his agent is considering many options. And for sure, I think Rojo will leave Manchester United at the end of this transfer window. About Smalling, they are in talks with, with us, Roma. You know, Roma are still working to get Smalling, and I think they will, because really Smalling wants to, to come back to Roma. So the situation is the same that Manchester United have with, with the players they want to sign. At the same moment, Roma are considering, OK, Smalling wants to come back to Roma, and we need to wait some weeks, so it's possible Manchester United will ask a lower fee to, to sell Smalling. Roma are going to offer, what I'm told is, around... 12 million euro, so they're going to try with this kind of bid. Manchester United was starting around 20 million euro, so we have a big difference. But I think with the player who wants to come back to Roma and with Manchester United, who are considering a different strategy because he's not involved in Manchester United plans in this moment, it's possible the agreement will come on following weeks. So, yes, I think the chance backs will be in particular the players who are going to leave Manchester United on next days or next weeks. I mean, I hope so, because the big... Th a major thing about United this summer is we needed a new centre-back. And that's why the links to Deo Upamancano were interesting, but they've gone a bit quiet. You know, if we do sell Smalling and Roma, that's two, sorry, Smalling and Rojo, that's two centre-backs off the books. As far as you know, are United actively looking to sign a centre-back this summer or is Solskjaer just going to be getting rid of a couple? 
I think yes, if they would find if they would sell um, uh, Smalling and, and Rocco, we have the possibility of Manchester United go, going for a new centre back. Obviously, you have to consider some opportunity because it's impossible to sign Sancho van de Beek and your top centre back in the same summer, in the same weeks. Because we have to speak about um, weeks now because we have just four weeks left before the, the end of the transfer window. So. In this moment, the situation of the centre-back, as you said about Upamecano, is the same of Koulibaly. They are players appreciated by Manchester United, but in this moment it's so difficult also because the close of Upamecano is for next summer and not for this one. So it will be so difficult this summer to go to Leipzig and offer like 60 or 70 million euros to, to sell the players. So in this moment I'm told that Leipzig if want to keep Upamecano would be so difficult, but Manchester United are fully capable many, many years, so he's an appreciated player and I think in the future he could be in the list of Manchester United. For this summer, we have to wait about the situation of Molding or Rocco and to see what they will decide if some opportunity will arrive for a new centre-back. But I, I think, mean, yes, I, I think they will go for a centre-back. I, I hope that is the case and I really do hope that United can move Smalling on, can move Rojo on and, and see what happens there. But thank you very much there for all the updates on Sancho. Uh, I suppose it, it all relates around that 120 million euro fee. And as you've said there, it all depends on whether United will pay or not. Sancho wants the move. He's wanted the move. He's not agitating for the move, but he's there to join us. And the same goes for Regulon. Wants to join United. And it's a big thing for United to be signing players that actually want to join the club. I suppose one last question I want to say before we go for Brizio. We've been talking about Sancho loads, Regulon, Tellez has been another name that's popped up. Are there any other players that United have actively been looking at this summer that maybe have sort of gone under the radar or that we could see happen in the next couple of weeks that no one's really been talking about? Not as much anyway. You want me to say any name? <laughs> oh, just any, any agents that you've been speaking to that, uh, that United have been at least pursuing Yes, but, but I think um, Manchester United have a different strategy from other clubs, but different from, from any other club because they go for a top target, for example, Sancho, and you have seen with Bruno, and you have seen with Maguire, and you have seen also with Van de Beek because Manchester United have signed Van de Beek in three or four days, but they were working on Van de Beek also in June, in May. So they have a different mentality. They want to sign a top player, they go for a top player. I think it's the same that Liverpool did some years ago when Klopp arrived and they signed Salah and they signed Van Dijk and they signed Alisson. So the mentality is the same. They are not going, I think, in, in a different way for other players. In this moment, they are really working for their top target, like Sancho, like Reguillon and, and others. So we have to wait and understand what will happen with these players. If they can sign, for sure they have in the list many other options. They want to stay like this because they need players. They want a winger, for sure. So we are speaking about Sancho, but I'm convinced that if they don't sign Sancho, for sure they have other options and <laughs> we'll try to discover it because, as I told you, Dembele is so appreciated. Douglas Costa is offered like every day by his agents, but Manchester United are not so convinced about him. So we have to wait a bit. Also because, you know, the agents of the players too, if they know that the club have, has, have another important target, top target, like Sancho, they are not so convinced to offer players to Manchester United, to speak with, with Manchester United, because they know that they are going for Sancho. But if it, if it will change, I'm sure that Manchester United will have many other options and they will sign a top deal also on last week's if they can sign Jadon Sancho. Well, I hope you're right. And as I said, Fabrizio, thank you very, very much for your time today. I hope you all... Enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you drop a like on it. Uh, hopefully we'll speak to Fabrizio again after the transfer window is done. United have signed Sancho. We've signed Regulon. <laughs> we've signed everybody. I hope, <laughs> I hope for you. I really hope you. so as well. Uh, and thank you. Thank you really. It's been a, been a real pleasure. And see you after the window. We are going to comment. We are going to talk about what happened. So let's see. And thank you again. Thank you very much. Thank you.